Hello, everybody, and welcome to the official Build It Construction launch webinar. This is actually our second launch webinar. We held one two weeks ago, but wanted to um, hold a second for different regions around the world. And uh, speaking here is Scott Diaz. I'm Director of Business Development for our AEC division, or Construction BIM Vertical. And I've got with me Asim. Asim, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, so. Um, as you can see, my name is Asim Larry, and I am actually the sales engineer in around Europe. Um, so I'll help um, today in terms of the, the technical side of it, and um, Scott will actually introduce what Builder is and the background of it. Awesome's here to make sure that I don't make too many mistakes. So let um, me give you a brief, <laughs> a brief uh, summary of the uh, the webinar here. So it's can provide an introduction to our new construction verification software platform. And the key word here is platform. So as we go through, we we'll start to explain a little bit more what we mean by that um, for Ferro Build It Construction. At the end of the webinar, uh, we we'll hope that you'll learn how Ferro is leveraging our metrology side of our business for Build and Verify, something that we've been working in for a long time, which is manufacturing uh, and applying those techniques to construction. We hope you understand Pharaoh's commitment and continued investment to the build process. We'll show you some examples of demonstrating the core features of build a construction, which is probably why most of you are logging in to get a taste of what we do. And we'll review how to get started with free trials, how to set up customized demonstrations with some of our sales engineers, get some uh, pricing if needed, and uh, any other desired next steps. We'll cover some Q&A as well. So just quickly, what is Build It Construction? Let's get that out in the open. So it is a construction verification software platform that enables AEC professionals to facilitate and accelerate validation to design specifications, tolerance evaluation, uh, and part positioning and building monitoring. So that's three separate subjects that we'll go into and each of those has their own uh, set of features. So a quick look at the agenda, we'll Define construction verification for those of you that are, that are new to it. We'll talk about the FARO roadmap to give you all an you know, idea of the new direction that FARO is going as a company in our construction BIM vertical. We'll talk about a brief history of where this product came from, go through the core features, which will be Awesome's uh, turn to uh, explain those major features. Talk about looking ahead, uh, where we plan to take this product and ideas for for the future, give you some insight into how licensing works and getting started with trials. Finally, we'll close it up with some questions. So right now on your screen in your BlueJeans interface, you should see a polling question popping up. And we just kind of want to know who's in the room today. So what is your primary industry specialty? I'm going to say today, what do you think, Austin? say surveyors that's gonna be I've, the winner yeah so for me it's it's more of a general contractors okay but let's see right. okay. let's so, see who's right you owe me one dollar if i win so uh we'll move ahead and then we'll take a look at the poll but what is construction verification qaqc so some of you may have seen this slide before some of you may have already attended um, these types of webinars and understand this term, but for those of you that, that have not, it's simply tools and processes performed throughout building construction, providing a routine feedback um, regarding construction progress and adherence to design or tolerance specification. So uh, constantly getting routine feedback through the build process to determine if we're on track with design intent or with intolerance. Where are we applying this today? Many of you may have already been doing this in your normal work without 3D laser scanning, without um, you know more high-tech tools. You do it as, as your normal work. We're trying to make that job easier. These are some examples of where we can apply technology for construction verification. So some of this may look uh, familiar to you, you know, concrete floor flatness, wall deflection, uh, site excavation. Uh, determining beam camber, stub in location for MEP, uh, determining the position of your model versus how things are being installed, 
uh, curtain wall and prefabricated paneling and cladding. So all these things are areas where we need to sort of build and verify. Build and verify is something we've done in manufacturing a long time. Now we're simply trying to figure out the best way to, to apply it to construction. Some of you may have seen this graph. It's been around now for a few years. It's from the McKinsey Global Institute. And it talks about the digitization of various industries. And you can see construction just way down at the bottom, uh, just above agriculture and hunting, which is somewhat embarrassing. But I would assume this is back in 2015. It's probably notched up a little bit now. Would, wouldn't you think so, Austin? I would, I would so, especially in Europe um, and UK. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, again, this is 2015. We're seeing a huge influx to construction tech now. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's at least uh, moved a little further away from agriculture and hunting. But um, just some fun facts here. And these facts vary based on the study that you that you read. But as much of, as 30% of construction cost is rework. So those of you that are involved in it now, uh, you can probably resonate with that fact. 10% of materials are completely wasted. And this is not just an environmental concern as well. This is, you know, can lose jobs by, by um, you know, overbidding and accounting for waste. So um, this is a, a valid concern as well. And labor is used at 40 to 60% efficiency. Uh, obviously this guy is not- uh, Yeah. <laughs> this time. Just wanted to mention um, in regards to the labor shortage, um, yeah. especially in the yeah. UK, um, the, house, the housing market is currently building. So um, the lack of investments in skills and infrastructure is in recent uh, years has really created skills shortage. So particularly for this, um, this software can be a, a quite useful uh, for the people who actually are moving into the construction industry and they don't have that skill. Um, they can use this software and bring that skill to with them. Right, yeah, and it, it's sort of, you know, with the younger generations coming in being technical, technically savvy, uh, but you know, this is an opportunity for us to, to kind of bring the strengths together between the younger generation and the older generation that will be exiting the workforce in the coming years who have all of the knowledge and experience. It's a way for them to sort of bridge their best strengths together. So um, I agree with you. I think that uh, construction tech is going to play a, a huge role in that. So what is our ambition here with the product? We essentially want to turn the construction side into the build and verify factory floor. We've, some of us have heard of how construction needs to mirror the auto industry, for example. And, and as I'll state multiple times, and, and I've stated already, this is something we've been doing at Faro. So uh, we want to be able to provide quality assurance and adherence to design intent throughout all processes, provide smart data capture and analysis of industry standard reporting. And eventually, you know, we'd like to be able to do this more uh, on site as well. So we don't just want to give you the ability to analyze existing conditions in a piece of software, but to also fully control our hardware as well. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. So, um, awesome, I guess, do you have the access to the poll there? I do. And I guess you are right. Um, so the survey is about 91% of OU $1. Um, you owe me $1, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to you know? make it a pound. <laughs> so that means I have to actually send you a pound, though. <laughs> That's great. Um, One coin. Yeah. <laughs> And 9% of general contractors. Um, okay. So yeah, I've, I've lost by 91%. Okay. All right. It's a disappointing loss for you. All right, let's move forward with the Faro roadmap here. So giving you all an idea of where Faro is going as a company. Now, if those of you out there are Faro customers or have heard of Faro before, you're probably familiar with our laser scanning. And um, we intend to change the, the thought that Faro is just a, a box pusher or laser scanning providers. Okay, so let's talk about what construction BIM is focused on in our vertical. Now, first let's break this out between the design side and the build side. On the design side, of course, we have designers that are working in these various products. In the Americas, it's mostly in the Autodesk world. In Europe, 
it could be a mixed bag. But essentially, if we've got green design or new design, uh, these folks are starting their, their design work in these environments without need for um, necessarily existing conditions unless we're doing site survey. If we've got an existing uh, facility or building, as we see on screen here, that's when we see the need for reality capture. And in the FARO world, that typically means the FARO focus and using the FARO scene software to register and connect all of our scans into an organized format. When we're ready to take the reality into these environments, currently we provide the PointSense plugins, and these, we provide plugins for AutoCAD and for Revit, which allow the uh, AutoCAD and Revit environments to do more with point clouds, so geometry extraction, modeling from the point cloud, and some analysis tools as well. But we also recognize that there's a gap in the, uh, in the offerings to the uh, other programs, and that's something that we intend to address as well. Now, talking about the build side, this is where we talk about a new construction platform, build it construction. The idea being that we can send our intended design into the build it construction platform, and as we are constructing on site, we can compare against that intended model or against intended uh, or known tolerances to determine if we're on track. So we intend to try and move this on site. People are capturing through different phases of the project, feeding that information into building construction and getting results um, to determine if they need to make adjustments in their design program. In addition, we'll talk about how we can uh, take our analysis and in some cases project it back out to the field. And we're also gonna look at using these types of devices in prefabrication. So one trend that if you're involved in construction now, um, in the construction space, in construction technology, uh, moving towards prefabrication is, is a big, big push. I know it's something that, at least over on, on my side of the pond, is getting a lot of attention. How much can we move I agree. offsite? I, Scott, I, I, I totally agree about the prefabrication because in UK, um, the government is gradually increasing the quality of pre prefabrication and module style. Um, so with the with the labor sh shortage, um, again, that's that's one of the key factors that we need to actually look into and tackle around, especially for particular public um, sectors or the public schools, uh, manufacturing and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Well put. So uh, we'll take a look, a closer look at how prefab, um, uh, our, our technology can, can speak to, to the prefab world and how we'll continue to push there. So just really quickly, a brief history of Build It. I want to talk about how we're going from metrology or manufacturing to construction. Where, where did this product come from? And actually, it was acquired by Faro in 2016. It's a Canadian company. And it was really acquired for our, the manufacturing side of our business, which is still the, the largest piece of our revenue as a company. And we saw a lot of these tools and, and asked ourselves, why, why couldn't we just apply these same algorithms to, um, to larger scale scanning, to construction BIM? I mean, the, the tools are there, we just need to tailor them um, and, uh, and polish them a little bit for, for our customer base. So we started a tech preview uh, back in July, 2017. Uh, we had a number of customers help us out. And for those of you that are out there, if you're attending, thank you for your assistance. You really helped push the direction of the, the first version. And uh, we recently released version one at the end of March. We've got a version two and three planned. The, the main thing to keep it in mind here is this is merely the beginning of Pharaoh's step into construction tech. So we've got a heavy influx of additional R&D investment. And we will be asking for your help, your feedback. And we need to understand what you want to make your lives easier so that we can put it into the product. So one thing to keep in mind here is that, you know, even though this is a new software for, for uh, our construction sector, keep in mind that build it's been around for a number of years, since the early 90s. It's been dedicated to high precision 
dimensional manufacturing and QC. So this is something that our core development team is very good at. All right, at this point, I am going to be quiet and I'm going to let <laughs> Asim uh, use his technical knowledge to take us through the uh, core features. So, Asim. I will, yeah, I will do my best to actually bring that technical inside this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, in terms of the core features, um, I just wanted to actually show you the whole summary of what build it, how it looks like, and, and what other features and what will benefit yourself. Um, so first, when you do actually open the software, you will see something like this um, at, at first sight. Um, so you'll see, as typical like other software, as you'll see a menu bar. Um, within the menu bar, you have all these tabs, constructions, measures, refine, evaluations, and so on. And then below that, you'll see a toolbar. And uh, on the side, you'll, you'll have a manager, command, report. Um, these Manager tabs is it's more of a um, a tab that brings in all the tree lines from the CAD software and, and you have all the measured um, data stored around, uh, along there. Um, we may go into uh, some summary details about that. And then at the bottom, you'll see the message and the spreadsheet. A message is similar to um, you have in, in um, let's say DWG or, or Autodesk. It's, it's a message bar that records every step and gives you results. And if you have um, taken a step um, incorrectly, it will give you a notification and, and so on. And the spreadsheet is more of an input data um, giving you all the values of what you have imported or what you have evaluated. So if we move to the next slide, uh, or we can show you a demonstration as a builder if Scott can actually. Yeah. If I can actually, yeah, let's see if I can. <laughs> there we go. That was my technical side. <laughs> um, so, what we have over here, um, you can see what Scott um, has brought up is a builder construction, which kind of doesn't look like what you've seen on the first slide. Um, I wanted to actually point this out to you, to everyone. Um, build it is a very customizable software. Um, it it could be as customable to, to your own uh, suits and needs. Um, so in terms of how it looks like and how you want it to um, maneuver the, the, the actual builder is um, for your own um, view and for your own uh, sake of mind. So, so in terms, I will show you how I, Scott has actually um, increased the, the actual icons. Um, so you can go, Right click on the toolbar, go to customize. Um, yeah, and here you have option, you can enlarge the icons. Um, you can actually, um, the, the, the actual features that you normally use on a regular basis, you can actually um, put that into the toolbar so you don't have to go into the menu bar tabs and, and bring it up. So, what I'll do right now is just briefly show you the, the icons that is showing right now on build it so what you have um, as a simple um, so if we can go into the new uh, file yeah so we have new file as we move along uh, you have open file save you can go back um, if, if you've done something wrong undo correct and then um, here I know um, in, the, in the States you work with inches, what we have is millimeters and centimeters. Now, bear in mind, if, even if the result comes up in inches, you can actually change this into millimeters and it will actually up, update itself in the live view. Um, so you don't have to redo the analysis again. So that's something cool in, the, in build it. Um, so as you move along, you'll have the simple features as zoom in, um, specify zoom in feature, um, and then uh, translate, rotate. Obviously, you can do that using your mouse also. Um, all the view captures, top, side, bottom view, and so on. Um, and then prospective views, optical and rules. Here, you have the view set. View set uh, normally allows you to actually cap, uh, position the way you want to see the actual model and your analysis, and you can do cross-section views within this. 
um, as you move along, you have view capture. I know it looks like a recording capture, but this is this is much more uh, than the, the way it looks. Um, so th this allows you to actually capture on section areas where you uh, intend to investigate. Um, and then you can go, once you have done the analysis, you can go into those areas and actually see what the devi uh, deviation is, if that um, makes sense. So over here, you have group picking. Group picking allows you to select, um, for example, um, you have an I-beam, which is 152 by 152, um, and you want to select this particular I-beam. So all you have to do is select one of the R152 by 152, and the software will think itself, use the manager tab, and actually select all the 152 by 152 i beam. So it's, it kind of helps you limit the time of selecting every single beam. Um, the, this feature, what we call is a toggle show, no show. It's a similar feature as hide and no hide. So you can hide um, particular uh, analysis or, or features, uh, and then you can bring it back in, in the future instance. Um, you have focus scanner. So build it can actually connect directly to focus. Um, so build it, build it can in, import FLS directly as well. So we have the capability to actually work um, live. Um, as you scan, it will bring it into build it and you can actually do the analysis on site. Yeah, you basically just type in your IP address of the scanner here and um, yes. it will uh, populate the scan data. So you can bypass ferrocene if you just, currently at the moment it's, it's a single scan position, right? But uh, we'll be adding more functionality for registration. Yes, I agree. Um, here, um, we can select this button over here. This is basically a, a, a shortcut for importing points. Um, if we select that just for once, uh, we can show you currently what we, we can import um, in terms of points. We can import CSV, FLS, LSproj, that includes LSproj, and E57. So we have E57 if, uh, for instance, you are actually getting data from another uh, third party and so on. Um, so we have that capability. Um, so as we go back to the uh, toolbars, this, these are the features that um, normally we use for cl cloud manipulation. Uh, we, we use a cloud to cloud registration, um, best fit alignment, which is um, which we'll, we we will discuss uh, on a later stage. Merge cloud, uh, split cloud, reduce cloud, filter, and auto associate. I don't want to actually go into too details because that will um, uh, give too much information. So uh, for me, it's for you to actually understand what build it is capable of. Um, so if, if we move on to the uh, right right hand side of the uh, the bar. Uh, as I mentioned before, you have a manager tab, and when you import CAD, such as from um, the Autodesk or Revit or anything like that, you will have a tree line that you have man uh, or constructed in a model, um, which we, you can use um, as it as it com came along. So um, you can actually use that to uh, do the analysis and pick out certain um, surfaces and so on. Um, we do have a tab called report, as I mentioned before. Um, the report feature in Build It is very simple and, and concise. Um, so it's 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 in within a few buttons. Um, you can have an outline of the whole report and actually export it, export that. Uh, you have the running man that can generate the report also. <laughs> That's right. As Scott mentioned. Yeah. So yeah, basically, everything up here is. <clears throat> cloud manipulation, right? And then for the most part, we try to keep it simple on the majority of the features for build a construction, the core features, um, we'll put those into a toolbar as well. Yeah. So as, as a demonstration, I think what Scott will actually show you is how to do a deviation of, um, of the cloud present over here. So at the moment, what you have is a, uh, am I right? There's a concrete, wet concrete port around. Uh, we captured this image, um, and Scott basically used that image and created the plane, and he's gonna he's gonna do a deviation, and it's simple. It's just you click right click on the uh, surface, and you get the deviation analysis. 
very simple, very quick, and that gives you an idea uh, where the out of tolerance is. If you want to actually inspect further, uh, you can go into the analysis bar, um, edit, and here you can actually change the um, the, the color scale, the analysis mode. So if uh, Scott is going to do a color patches with needles um, to an exaggerate where the actual out of tolerance is, so uh, the needles will help you. So it gives you a nice view of how uh, the actual uh, concrete is flat enough, you would say. Um, so once, once that's done, once you have the analysis, uh, we'll show you a demonstration of how to actually create a re uh, report. Um, Scott is going to take a, a view caption view of it at the front. So it's the top view. Top view, yeah. So check, close this out. And then basically at this point, right, I can use anything I want to throw in my report. So anything that's in the tree, I just right click and I say add to report. Absolutely. So that's in there now. I want to add my analysis, add to report, and go over to my report tab. And now at any point, I can just simply run the report. There's other customization options in here, right? But yes. it's as simple as saving a PDF now. Like I mentioned, it's, it's very simple, very concise. Um, and this result will give you a, a, a percentage of the actual uh, out of tolerance and within the tolerance and so on within the report. Um, obviously, you can customize this report with your own logo and you can put input your values and so on at the front. Um, so here, although we have the operator name administrator, but you can add further more stuff in there. So as you scroll down, you can see the, uh, the actual graph and um, telling you the amount of percentage with each which is within tolerance and with outside tolerance and so on. Yep. So that, yeah, so that gives you a brief, say, yeah. Yeah, maybe ahead. you mentioned briefly, sorry, uh, uh, just the um, import options as well, right? So oh, yes. we talked so about importing in, points, yeah. but maybe importing models as well. Yes, so um, build it currently, if you, uh, if Scott will actually uh, select the import models, and uh, it will demonstrate uh, what Buildit can import. Um, we know that um, Buildit is it's quite strong in the, on the metrology side and has been for quite some time. Uh, we work with a lot of metrology software, as you can see. Um, in terms of the construction, we are stepping into it. So currently for this version, Buildit can actually import DWG, IGS, STEP, or um, SAT. Um, that basically um, is the, the universal uh, importers that you can use currently. Um, in the near future, uh, we are looking into importing uh, more directly from the IFC and Revit and, um, and, and, and hopefully other softwares also. Um, so we have that capability. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, so let's back to the slides here. Yes. So what we gave you right now is just a, just a simple demonstration of how uh, Build It works and what Build It can actually provide in terms of floor flatness. Uh, so if we, if we move on to the next slide, they just wanted to go through all the core features, what Build It can, what we have concentrated on. Um, so what we will do today in the, in the webinar today in the presentation, uh, we will go through these three um, core features. Uh, the first one is the validation to design. So this um, allows you to verify accuracy of scan data to design models, um, ensure adherence to design. So this is basically um, having a nominal um, CAD model which has been constructed and you use the focus GAND, which is the actual and then we bring, we align them together, or it can be pre-aligned and basically do a deviation and see what the, the actual uh, implication is from actual and nominal. So this will involve, that's why we named it Build to BIM uh, as a surface analysis. And obviously in more than one analysis you can have. Um, 
we, we you can actually involve beam camber which is deflection of the beam um, and then we can move on into the tolerance uh, evaluation and this will be more of a, a non-cat analysis so this this basically we use is just a point based analysis um, and then we can try and use the points to our benefits and see what the deviations are. So this will involve flow flatness, wall flatness, and volume computation. And then right at the end, what I would go through is the 4D analysis, um, which is cloud to cloud comparison. The fourth dimension is time. So before and after. So if we move to the next slide, Build to build surface analysis. So, as I mentioned before, um, ensure construction is adherent to design model intend to compare point cloud to model. Um, that's the whole main feature. I, from from my experience, from from speaking to construction industries, uh, they found this to be a, a very nifty tool. Um, it it kind of reduces the the time and um, the actual effort taken as traditionally we used spot checking using total station. The process for this is quite simple. So what we use is a focus. Um, we basically scan using focus, import the uh, model, scan, um, uh, import the model and the scan and build it, and then measure the distance between the object wife's uh, surface analysis tool. Um, like I mentioned before, um, benefits are time saving. Um, and in terms of um, determining the out of tolerance areas, uh, it's it's quite accurate. Um, as a, as Scott mentioned, we we software build it software comes from a metrology background, so they, they're quite used to working in microns. Um, uh, for me, construction it's not a hard difficult thing to step into when when you're working with microns. Um, so in terms of uh, determining out of tolerance, it's quite hard, uh, easy to do. Um, prefab, so this helps you check if the errors are before leaving sites and avoid uh, import data uh, to third party software. So yeah, so we're sure, we'll, yeah. a series of videos coming up here. Yep. Uh, so uh, hopefully the lag is not so bad. I mean, everyone should get a recording in any case, but, um, but uh, awesome, you wanna walk them through this video. I will do, yes. Um, so this is a simple video that um, shows you a beam and uh, we wanna see the positioning of the beam. So what we've done is basically allow the software to do a deviation between the beam and, uh, well, the beam, the, the CAD, um, CAD uh, model beams uh, to the point clouds. Um, very simple. And as you can see from the result, uh, you can see the red dots uh, around there. That's where the, the beams are misplaced and it will give you an uh, indication of how much. And that allows you to go back and ask the surveyors to actually check what the load impact is on the, on the top of the concrete. Um, very, very quick. And obviously, if you're using a tool station, that would take much more time. And um, one thing I do want to mention here, which came up in the last webinar, is you know the alignment of the the model to the point cloud. We do highly recommend that it's you know already been pre-aligned with um, with survey control prior to importing to build it. Now we know that not in every case you're going to have a pre-aligned model, especially if you're working, let's say, in a in a fabrication shop or something like that. So we do provide methods. Uh, for auto aligning things, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But in this case, um, this was already, the model was already aligned to the point cloud using survey control and imported to build it. And that's really the recommended method. Exactly. Um, yes, like, like Scott mentioned, uh, we prefer it to be pre aligned, but build it has that uh, possibility to align um, the cloud to, to CAD uh, as well. Um, yep. Yeah. So, I'll move on to the next one here for beam camber. <clears throat> beam camber, um, similar similar um, method of um, analysis. Um, so over here, you're using a particular beam, and you're using that beam. You're you're getting the cloud. Um, you have the cloud and the CAD aligned, and what you're trying to do is to see how much deflection there is, 
uh, by doing a deviation between cloud and cat, so nominal versus actual. Um, so here, the method is exactly the same as we did, as we mentioned for the previous slide, was the, you scan with focus, open the model, scan and build it, perform local surface analysis on an object and um, annotate specific areas uh, as needed. So benefits, um, this is, this is quite beneficial for the uh, health and safety uh, inspector also because you don't have to go through this. Um, in terms of measuring beams, you don't have to actually um, go into places where, where it's quite hard to get into. Um, and as also, uh, it's safe and um, it determines the stress pre-post concrete uh, pour for risk um, meditation. Uh, and tolerance evaluation. So if we go into the next slide, I'll show you a demonstration uh, using this video. Um, as you can see, the, the user uses um, the cloud and associates the, the cloud to the beam. The, the CAD software will actually um, think itself and associate these points to the um, surfaces of the beam. And it will neglect anything that is unneeded for the inspection. And then what we will do is basically measure the surface on the bottom surface of the beam, um, compare the, the nominal to the actual. And this will allow us to see the deflection. As you can see, the deflection is much greater in the center, which is, which is what we expected. And it will give you the value of what inspection, uh, what the actual deflection is. Um, you can yeah, do that as a annotating yeah, this ahead. stuff is pretty simple too. Sorry, yeah, uh, you, you mean you can just simply tag the annotations along uh, the beam as well to determine deflection between the the perfect model and the and the point cloud as well. Yeah, precisely. Um, it's it's just a one one click of a button, and you can annotate that. Um, as Scott mentioned, um, we do prefer um, the cloud model to be aligned, pre-aligned, but we build it has that capability to align um, itself. Um, for for large for large uh, cloud or, or or CAD model, we prefer it to be point-based alignment. If you have uh, alignment of a pipe. Uh, assembly line or, or pipe assembly within the construction industry and you want to investigate whether it's assembled as per the um, designed model, um, that's quite simple. So I will demonstrate that in the next video. Um, so over here, um, what we have is a scanned uh, data of the actual uh, pipe assembled within uh, in the construction site so the the user will actually select the regions where he what he would think that's the best way to align so he will select um, sections of these pipes so three section pipes so like i mentioned it's very very simple um, in terms of um, cutting the plane and creating cylinder pipes and so on. So over here, he, what he does is he selects those regions and associates those um, points to the CAD. And once that's done, the software will think itself and actually best fit align. Um, it will give you a value of an error, how, how best it is aligned. Obviously, we use this a lot in metrology and uh, we have to um, use this. And, and we're quite strong in that sense. Um, I, I don't see that as a problem when moving into construction industry. Once this is aligned, you can go further and actually do the evaluation as we went along in the first slide. Um, moving on. So we went through the validation to design. Now going into tolerance uh, evaluation. This is more an accurate uh, inspection of existing conditions. So this involves full flatness and levelness. So purpose, ensure floor are installed uh, to desired tolerance. Uh, we had a lot of feedback in regards to this and a lot of um, early adapters were quite interested into this. So we, we, we went ahead and actually brought this uh, for you guys. Um, traditional method, uh, we use dipstick and uh, floor uh, profiler. The process 
again, very simple, scan with focus, and then we perform FF, FL, um, ASTM, obviously we, um, it's similar to the ISO standard, and extract floor heat map um, and toggle lines. Benefits, enormous time saving, possible to measure while cement is wet, uh, perform industry standard ASTM, uh, and uh, analyze entire surface, not just spot checks. Um, and then Scott will explain how we can use a projector to indicate these deviations. Um, on this, yeah, so we'll give you a video of a demonstration, a um, couple of videos that Scott just uh, did this one as a demonstration. So again, we'll go through this uh, step by step. Um, we've chosen the car, uh, surface, the, the best fit plane, and this basically gives you a, um, a deviation analysis of that floor. Um, the other method is the FF and FL. So what you do is draw a line along the um, along the surface of the clouds where you want to investigate, and from there you can actually use the feature called FF and FL and specify what's the maximum minimum. And if the actual FF and FL is outside tolerance, it will give you a red. Um, indication and you can actually do that and import that into the report and you will get the code standard report as well yeah, and this is just so you know we can provide the same functionality as what's considered industry standard yes over here um, we'll give you a demonstration of a topography um, topography uh, will help you indicate um, certain um, heights of the floor and, and later on uh, you can use that as a, as a projection uh, using a tracer and projector. So that gives you a 3D three, three analysis. Uh, moving to the next slide, you'll have wall flatness and plumbness. The method is exactly the same as the floor flatness. Um, not much difference in, in terms of deviation um, over here, um, particularly uh, if, you, if you're measuring a shaft, if you're measuring a wall and you, you want to see whether um, they have actually constructed it as a, it's, it's flat enough, it's not actually um, 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 curving on the other side or, or bending down or because sometimes when you put too much concrete, obviously um, it doesn't actually uh, form as you expect it to be. Um, so this method will allow you to um, show that and, and, and give you the analysis uh, with ease. So in terms of this process, very similar to floor flatness, you scan with the focus, you do a surface analysis and build it. Um, again, benefits are the same. This is, in a, this is a video of how it's done. So we, we have a CAD software with the um, wall, uh, front wall, we create a plane, a best fit plane that is the builder actually creates using the points and then um, we simply uh, perform a surface deviation in relationship to the points and i will say that the the analysis itself you know when we extract the plane there are of course methods for restricting the plane to be perfectly perpendicular or parallel so you're comparing against uh, you know perfection Exactly, and um, I did. I did get a couple of questions from the contractors and surveyors about how, um, if they want to actually, you do create a plane using the points. If you want to actually um, redirect the plane and, and increase the slope, you can do that in the construction tab. So you have that possibility to create another plane and do a deviation in relationship to your constructed plane. So that's wall plumbs. Um, we move to the volume computation now. I, I, I feel this is a, a really cool feature, um, especially in terms of um, saving money on the material um, side. Um, volume computation allows you to um, give you an, um, a nice analysis and a view of a cloud data that you just took from using scan, uh, scan, uh, focus. and. Um, it will give you the analysis of the surface area and uh, the amount of um, volume missing. So, for instance, if you have a, um, a concrete that you're actually trying to fill in, and you can actually scan and perform this analysis, and it will 
the software will give you the uh, amount of fill volume required and um, you can work your back and actually estimate how much material you need uh, how much truck load of uh, cost it will um, um, how many turns of the truck load you, you have um, again reduce it reduces waste um, and it det determines um, the uh, the current assets on, on site yeah. we'll give you an example this is more of a um, garage scan so here um, you have a section where um, you want to investigate and you want to see how much volume um, of material is required to fill this section um, you basically select that region um, you create um, a plane telling the software that's the top surface of the plane um, and then you can specify in a later stage of, of um, in this if you have debris you can remove it but obviously in this in this function you don't have one um, and then once you play that uh, feature it will give you the analysis and if we go into the message bar it will tell you the floor area of the selected region and then it will give you the volume which is below the cut above the cut and and the amount filled so it's 3.47 cubic feet required um, to fill that section which um, makes perfect sense for you right cubic feet yes no it, it doesn't um, I do um, I do feel for the European guys but uh, obviously um, you can change that unit to millimeters uh, that demonstration was done from the states um, sorry about that <laughs> So um, that was tolerance evaluation. Um, the last, uh, the last uh, core feature that I wanted to actually touch was the positioning and monitoring. Um, I will go through the 4D analysis. Um, as I mentioned before, the fourth dimension is cloud. So if we move to the next slide, <clears throat> um, this basically proposes two scan data. So over here we have an example. Um, we have a chapel that we scanned before and after. Uh, we wanted to see the deviation uh, when the roof was renovated. So basically the process was to import the data, um, run the cloud to cloud analysis, and then visualize deformation and export report. Um, again, this, this method can also um, give you um, a, an indication what has changed uh, in terms of the floor area also. So um, I had a couple of situations where the clients asked me they wanted to see before and after what, how they actually put a concrete slab and so on. Um, they wanted to see all the de uh, deviations. Um, so Scott will actually show you a quick video of how that, that is done. It's very, very simple. Um, so all you need to do is cut the plane of the cloud. You want to investigate just the roof. You select one cloud as a reference, you select the other, um, and you just tell the software to do the analysis, um, picking out your own tolerance within and outside, and that software will actually give you the analysis. So the reference will be created as a mesh, uh, as a normal, and the, the actual measurement is used as a point, so it gives you the deviation between both. I'll pass this to Scott now, so he can go into it. Okay. Um, uh, yep. Should we look at the poll um, beforehand, just just to see um, if we have actually gone into the second poll, so we can actually ask uh, another? Well, so, we should have the other one coming up here in just a second, I think. So let me, sure. um, yeah, let me pop pop that up. Uh, so yeah, real quickly. Now this is this is live in the product now, and. It's something that we're investigating further use of, especially in prefabrication. So for those of you that are already using robotic total stations or you're familiar with our laser tracker devices, uh, this is a way for us to, uh, in real time, uh, you know, keep track uh, positioning of parts. So whether we're placing parts on site or whether we need to sort of ver verify if our, um, if our uh, structure is accurate to the model, uh, we can reflect that uh, back 
live from build it so there's always this live tracking going on and this is something that if you're interested in learning more about especially in the prefab world as you're assembling uh, to do some live live build and verify during construction let us know because we are uh, actively looking for testers here so just just to kind of highlight this a little bit further you know we talked about build it being able to control the, the Ferro Focus laser scanner, but for a long time now, it's already been able to control the laser tracker, a series of different uh, total station manufacturers, and uh, the tracer, which we'll talk about next. So really, the focus is just the latest addition, um, and that's where we talk about a, an entire platform to give our users the ability to con fully control hardware, um, and not just one piece of hardware, but uh, multiple. So this here, we're gonna talk about project analysis to the field. Now, this is in beta, okay? And we've thought about some different methods for using this, but the device that you see sort of making some moves on the right side is the Tracer M. It's a 3D projection device. And what we're trying to, to see here is, is, is where it could apply best for construction. Um, we thought about ideas for projecting corrective actions on site for you know, cut and fill, concrete location, things like that. Maybe uh, projecting out where a layout of new equipment should go in uh, factory planning. And also just projecting templates for prefabricated elements. And that's kind of where I see, see the big benefit is right now. It's somewhere where we can project uh, digital templates and not have to use physical ones. So how does it really work? It projects a very clear laser onto either a flat or a complex contoured surface. It really doesn't matter. Uh, so it's a large scale laser guided assembly. If anybody's ever been to the beginning of a, you know, a, a basketball game where they're doing a laser light show on the floor, it's kind of like that, except extremely accurate because it's meant for metrology. So it's a virtual templating solution. And essentially you get that um, repeat template uh, on site or in your warehouse over and over and over uh, as a guide for assembly. So here's just one example of a, how we applied the Ferro Focus and Tracer. So first what we did was we went out to the field and we scanned directly with Buildit. We didn't use Ferro Scene software. We just used Buildit, captured the scan data, populates inside of Buildit. And then from here we run that um, uh, topo analysis to get our contour lines like awesome showed before so the same example and so you'll see these topo lines get extracted out from the floor and that'll give us uh, our highs and lows and from there what we're going to do is take these contour lines and send them to the projector prepare a projection file for it so all this is done in one product we select the, the objects that we want to send out for projection. It preps that file, and then we projected the floor flatness out to the floor here. You can see the actual laser. And wherever you see those heavier dots, those are actually the vertices. And just like pretty much everything else in Build It, we can provide any sort of customized and detailed reporting. So pretty cool application. If this is something interesting for you, uh, again, please reach out to us because it is in beta. It's something that we're trying to investigate further. So now it does bring us to our next poll question and kind of winding down here with time. Um, you should see the poll on the right side. And this is just a taste, right? This is a short introduction, a high level introduction to the major features. But we do plan to provide additional webinars throughout the year that are focused on specific functions, uh, maybe giving some case studies and success stories, or just giving more in-depth demonstrations on how to actually perform these things. So uh, if you could vote for the function where you'd like to learn more about, and maybe that'll help us rank uh, what order we put together webinars in the future. So again, I'll give uh, Awesome a chance to win his money back here. Um, go ahead and you make your choice, Awesome. I think it'll be the full flatness analysis. Okay, I'm gonna say projector. Here we go. Uh, so we'll let that um, load up and then we'll keep going forward. So next steps, pricing. 
this is our first subscription-based software, software as a service. Uh, now, pricing does vary by region, by country, so that's why we haven't posted it here. If you are interested in pricing, it's best just to go to faro.com and request a quote, or if you have a uh, faro contact, such as an account manager, or you have a faro distributor you work with, reach out to them and they can get you local pricing. Uh, we do offer one and three year options and again prices vary by region and as far as getting started we offer <clears throat> a free trial now the trial will download and start working immediately for seven days and during that time someone should be contacting you um, to make sure you get started okay if you want a more in-depth demonstration uh, we do recommend that uh, and we can extend the trial up to 30 days at that time as well, so give you some more time to get used to the software. So uh, very simple to, to download, and we should be following up with an email with these links as well, so you don't have to worry about it. But we do encourage you, um, if you're interested, really even if you're interested in pricing as well, go ahead and download the trial and someone will reach out to you. So this is really a great way to, to get started. Um, I do want to mention quickly, uh, Chris Palmer, one of our other sales engineers, uh, wanted me to give a small plug to the Faro Construction Day that's coming up April 20th in Rugby in the UK. So if you're in that area uh, and wish to attend, this will be a full-on uh, construction day talking about a number of different things, including Build It, as well as some of our other applications for construction QA, QC. Uh, also taking a look at point sense, virtual reality from scene, um, and uh, best practices for running clash detections and Autodesk products, things like that. So really a cool event, great chance to do some networking as well. So at that point, uh, at this point, excuse me, we'll um, open it up for questions. We're a little tight on time. Uh, so uh, I will ask maybe uh, Matthew, if you can um, uh, pull a few questions for us. And uh, actually, um, Asim, do you want to give us the results so we know if you won? Um, I didn't. Um, it was a surface analysis and deformation, uh, and for the analysis, they came up as 45%. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, projector got zero, so. <laughs> Does that mean we owe everybody else a dollar? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's, let's take a look at questions here, because we're just about out of time. And for those of you that want to stick around for questions, um, now would be the time. So Matthew, could you please pull some for us? Sure. Uh, we have uh, one question here from Andreas um, asking about, uh, well, in the V1, it's not possible to import IFC, although there is an import uh, for step files. Yep. So I guess so, the question is, uh, yeah, so basically asking for confirmation of that. So yeah, yep. I, I can answer that one if you, if you want. Uh, so that that is correct. Um, so either using step, IGES, or SAT files, which uh, like the Autodesk product can generate uh, very good SAT files, and that's probably the, the best way to go. We can also do DWG, DXF files uh, for in, in the current version, and the IFC import capability is planned for the next release, which should be out by the middle of the year, around the August timeframe. Perfect. And another question, which I'm not sure I get, so I'll I'll, I'll fill that to you, uh, Scott, if you want. So it, it, it's it's possible. Is it possible to export BCF instead of PDF? So I'm not familiar with BCF format. Mm, yeah, I'm not as familiar, but maybe that's something we can investigate offline. Well, one thing I can say though, uh, the reporting framework in Build It is is very very flexible. So I think Scott m showed only the PDF export, but we also have. Uh, PowerPoint, Excel, CSV, all sorts of different formats. And it's actually quite relative, well, relatively simple for us to add additional formats depending on uh, what you're expecting. Um, so get in touch with us and maybe give us a little bit more info as to what you're looking for. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we can do something because it, it is very flexible in terms of what we can do with reporting. Uh, maybe uh, there was a, a couple of questions we got uh, the first time around when we did the uh, the webinar. Um, so maybe um, will you do one-on-one -on -one demos online and in person and or in person out on a job site? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I think that first of all, anybody that that needs a web demonstration, you can you can uh, 
step one is to download that trial. So like I said, go download the trial and then someone will reach out to you. We'll get a sales engineer to work directly with you via web. If you need someone to come out on site and actually test something and prove it out. Uh, those are the types of things we're used to doing anyway as Faro. So absolutely. Uh, we got another question came in uh, from Scott Gear. Uh, is the software limited by imported file sizes? I'll maybe leave that one for, for you, Matthew. <laughs> uh, so no, th there is no limitations on the file sizes that you can import uh, in theory. In practice, it's going to depend more on the hardware capabilities and the kinds of analyses that you want to do. Um, I mean, if, if, if you look, well, really, that's it. it. It depends on the complexity of the analysis that you want to do with those files, but there's no hard limit as to the uh, the files that you can import. So you could be billions of points. It could be very large uh, models. Uh, the performance, of course, is going to depend on, on your hardware and the kinds of the, the complexity of the analysis that you want to do with them. Uh, another point that we touched maybe on the previous uh, presentation that we didn't get to touch here was with regards to the automation capabilities of the software. If you want to speak to that, maybe. Yeah, so we had a question in the last um, in the last webinar about whether or not it was possible to create custom macros and custom routines just to sort of streamline things for certain users. So if you're sort of the IT person or the nerd at your office, then you know it is possible. And maybe awesome, you can throw in here. It is possible to uh, create custom macros so that when someone opens up a module and build it it actually guides them through step by step what buttons to push in what orders. Um, so if it's just strictly yes. for full flatness, it could walk them through that. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Um, um, in, in, in explaining about building metrology, um, um, building metrology is quite strong when it comes to the automation and um, their, their core, uh, their core um, benefit is the actual process on automation. And it kind of helps people to create their own process and their own steps. So yes, it, when it comes to the construction side, I don't th see that as a problem. Um, so that basically helps you create your own own way of actually um, of the analysis. So your steps can be imprinted before and all you have to do is just play the process and, and you don't have to go through one by one step uh, after another. I hope that clarifies that question. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, actually, we, at the same time I was finishing up my question, there's a, a question that came in on this subject. Uh, is it possible to automate the analysis on a certain number of beams uh, and get it all in a report page uh, per BIM element? Um, so I, I, th I think you've basically what your, your answer before with regards to automation touched on that. So definitely it is possible to have the automation either be completely fully packaged, so it's basically a fully automatic process, or it could be a process where there are some inputs from the users and those inputs could be uh, selecting specific beams or specific elements that you want to analyze. Or maybe if you have a, a specific naming convention that you have in your model that's being imported, you can maybe give it a, a root name and it's going to find all of the elements automatically that match that name and do the analysis on that. So yeah, there's there's a lot of power in the automation that that's uh, waiting to be used uh, in, in this product. And we really haven't touched that on, on the presentation. It's, it's all there. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a number of developments that are, you know, we have in our mind that can really, really enhance the product as well. We're, I know internally we're very excited about where the product's going. I mean, right now we've, we've basically showed a, a various ways for surface analysis. And if, you know, the previous question was alluding to also object-based analysis, like, is this entire beam out of place? Uh, those are types of things we're investigating as well, and that, that um, um, things that are important for us in the, in, in the near future. So uh, obviously automation uh, is important. Yeah, I just wanted to actually touch base on the sense that the service that we provide, um, if you have any ideas, if you have any like um, a view of how to do an analysis and so on, I mean, that, that doesn't stop you to, ask us and that kind of gives us an idea and we can actually work on that and uh, provide those views and ideas to you. Um, so in terms of our service, we're there to help you. Yep, that's a good point. I mean, this 
product from the construction side is uh, early early days, right? So we've we are ready to be molded by our, our customers' demands, essentially. Uh, I guess you know we're we're five about five minutes over now, so I kind of want to close things up, but I do want to push folks one more time again if you need to download the trial it's here um, you'll get this link as well it'll start seven days you can get extended to 30 uh, the other piece that I did want to share is the knowledge base so if you're not familiar with Pharaoh's knowledge base it's here uh, you go to uh, knowledge.pharaoh.com see things on a number of pieces of hardware here but you also come down and you can see build it and you'll see build it construction if you visit the build it construction page um, you'll find step-by-step uh, -step videos on performing these functionalities. So as you get started with your trial, uh, we encourage you to use the knowledge base as a starting point and in addition reach out to us for assistance for a one-on-one -on -one web demonstration uh, so we can assist you and get you going in the, in the right direction. So with that, uh, I think it's probably best we close it down. We're a bit over time. But I just want to thank everyone for their attendance and uh, thank you for your interest in Build It Construction. And we hope to hear from you. We hope to hear your feedback and hope to see you downloading trials and, uh, and start using our, our new product. Thank you, guys. Thanks again. Have a great rest of the week.